doing this video about air conditioning and heating and what I wanted to talk to you guys about is about preventive maintenance as far as being able to look at your unit and tell if something's wrong with it and to prevent problems that can occur and basically not to wait until spring or summer to turn your air conditioner on because by then it's too late to prevent problems. One of the things I like to talk to you about is a really simple way to do preventive maintenance on your air conditioning unit. And by the way, I'm not just telling you this, I'm a certified air conditioning heating technician. I have a diploma from RCC for air conditioning and heating. One of the things that you can do to prevent, have preventive maintenance achieved on your air conditioning unit is to change your filters regularly. You need to change your filters once a month. Changing your filters once a month can help prevent your air conditioner compressor, which is a commonly forgotten about part of your unit, from having failure. The reason your air conditioning unit compressor can have failure is because if your filter is clogged or dirty, it can build up high head pressure in your air conditioning unit. And what that means is the components in your compressor will start to heat up and it can cause an electrical failure and cause your unit to not work anymore. Another thing that I wanted to talk to you about that you can do as far as maintenance on your air conditioning unit is to keep one of these around. This is called a capacitor. A capacitor helps to give the fan on your indoor air conditioning unit, your blower fan specifically, or your outdoor fan for your outdoor unit if you have a heat pump or a, you know, a condenser unit outside running your air conditioning. This gives an electromagnetic force, which is what the air conditioner fan runs off of. This is what gives it a charge. So when you turn your air conditioner on at your thermostat and you press that you want it to be cold, it'll send a signal to your fan to kick on and it's a sequence of operation. Well, your fan alone does not have enough power to turn on. So this, what, this is like a battery. It stores a charge and can get that unit to give it that extra bit of juice to be able to turn your fan over. And once it starts running, this capacitor disengages and then the fan basically runs on its own. But it needs that extra push. So if you keep one of these at home, let's say your air conditioning unit stops working in the middle of the night on a Saturday. No one's going to come out to fix your air conditioning unit, and if they do, they're going to charge a lot of money. But if you have one of these you can put on, it's very simple. You just take off one wire at a time and do it exactly the way it's supposed to be done, and it should work just fine. So here's a short recap before we finish. Here's your filter. You need to change it once a month. You need to have a capacitor around and look at your unit, and you can tell this, this capacitor is a 45.5 microfarad. This one right here is a good is a is a good brand to have. It's made by Heartland. Usually you have to be certified in air conditioning and heating to buy one of these, but if you go to like Murphy's Electrical or somewhere, maybe they'll maybe they'll work with you, or maybe you might even see an air conditioner technician there who might purchase this for you that's already in line or you know something like that. Alright? Another thing you can do as far as your air conditioning unit, you need to keep your coils clean. If your unit, if you haven't been changing your filter, your coils on your air conditioning unit become dirty. And one way to get rid of that dirt is to use this. This is called a foam cleaner, a coil, air conditioner coil foaming cleaner. And you spray this on your, your indoor coil and what it will do is it will foam up and then the foam will start to dissolve and take away all that dirt around your coil and it will go into your condensation drain and it'll run out of your condensation drain. So you can get this. Now listen, you, you might want to get, you definitely have to get the, the kind that's foam for the indoor unit and you want to get the kind that's liquid that you mix or pre-mix for your outdoor unit. The outdoor unit you can take a water hose and just rinse it off and after it's been up there and applied long enough. This right here you can't bring a water hose in your house and get your floor all wet so you want to use something that just sticks to the indoor coil and cleans it and then rinses out 
through your condensation uh, drain. That's another thing I want to talk to you about, which would be tip number four, is to always monitor your condensation drain. Because when you see water coming out of your condensation drain, that's usually the moisture in your house. When your air conditioner on, people say it's getting more, uh, it's getting cold in there. Well, actually, you're removing heat, and that heat travels through your condensation trap into your condensation line, and it, it removes the moisture in your home. One of the things you can do is check it to make sure it's dripping properly, and if it's not, it could be clogged up. So after a while, it gets this murky stuff in there, and it can kind of clog up your coil, and that can lead to, you know, a lot of problems as far as getting water on your floor. Matter of fact, I had that happen to me the other day, so I ran a snake into a condensation line and pulled out all that goop. A snake is a piece of wire, like a plumbing in the plumbing department, and you can just, you know, snake it through and then pull, yank it out carefully and it'll clean out the trap or you know the line you can also put something on your unit to where you can get an alert if you put a some kind of alert system on your condensation trap now we're getting way too technical but I would just keep an eye and make sure it's dripping properly so that's tip number number four tip number five if you want to make sure your air conditioning unit is cooling properly you can either do one or two things you have a liquid line and a suction line in the summertime, the suction line will be the will be cold, and in the wintertime, the suction line will be hot because it, your air conditioning unit has a reversing valve, and it'll reverse, you know, itself. So if you come to find out that your suction line is, you don't think it's cold enough or it has a bit of condensation, you can always touch it and see if it's beer can cold, and usually that'll be about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't feel comfortable touching the the uh, suction line hose, which would be the bigger hose in the summertime, you can get one of these tip number tip number five, you can get one of these thermal meters here, thermal, this is a thermal meter that will basically, thermometer, infrared thermometer, and this will basically let you know the temperature of your suction line, and you can relay that message to your technician so he doesn't overcharge you, so you can tell him exactly what, you're, what reading you get on this, and it should be around 40 degrees and then if they want to charge you for extra refrigerant and all that stuff you can say uh-uh it's about 40 degrees so it's cooling properly or it's not cooling properly properly let's say it's 60 degrees that's not going to cool your home so it has to get down a little bit lower than that well it can cool your home on the inside at the registers the registers will read a little bit higher than what it would read on the suction line you follow me and that's tip number five thanks for watching and have a great day.